search for objectives. In the end, Faust was saved because he ceased to smoke the goal he had never obtained. Well, that was the illusion that he found his Jung says our fundamental process is that we have lost the intuition of the universe of any connection. But more buoyance, recognition, and telepathy are activities of the emotional rather than the intellectual. But you still have to provide more than space for the interior of society. It's very good, Mrs. Gardenick. Go to night school. It's very good. There's only one thing wrong. It's the word night. I know it sounds like N-I-T-E, but we spell it N-I-G-H-T, night. OK? I can never get that one word, that school. That's wrong, isn't it? Yeah. It's S-C-H-O-O-L, Charlie, not S-K. S-C-H-O-O-L, yeah. OK, everybody. Next Wednesday, we start it through page 20. Good night. Night, Miss Kenyon. Oh, Charlie, we missed you at the clinic. The doctors wanted to do some tests. Oh, yeah. Well, I forgot. I went to the library, and I never seen so many books in my life. Don't forget the clinic tomorrow night. No, I'm going to write it down on my blackboard twice, I promise. Good night. Night, Miss Kenyon. Hello, Charlie. Thanks for waiting for me. Good night. Good night. For instance, apples and pears. They're both alike because they're both fruit. Do you understand? Yeah. OK, we'll begin. Shoes and gloves. Charlie, shoes and gloves. Oh, I'll have rabbits for you. That's good, Charlie. Uh, shoes. Sho shoes. Shoes. Gloves. Shoes and gloves. Uh, uh, you wear them. That's right. Airplane. Automobile. Air airplane. Airplane. Automobile. Automobile. You ride them. You. You write in them. Yeah. Morning, afternoon. Uh. Morning, afternoon. Morning. Charlie, you don't have to worry about passing or failing, not these tests. It's a very, very funny face, Charlie. Charlie, I'm going to show you some pictures. Look at me. What happened in this picture? What do you see? Is a 
or something, is it? No. I want you to make up a story about these people. Well, I can't make up a, a story about people I don't know, Miss Kenyon. Yes, you can. You can... You can make believe. Make up a story. Is that a, a family? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's a family. Who is this? It's a father. Right. That is the father. Then who is this? That's a uh, mother. Uh huh? If that is the mother, then. Do you. Do you remember your mother? Yeah, sometimes I remember her. I think I remember her sitting on the edge of a bed, putting her hand on my head and saying, he's burning up. And, but then maybe it was the woman at the Institute, I don't know. Probably the woman at the Institute. That was probably. Probably the woman at the instant. Charlie, forgot what you have to do? Finish the floor. Come on, Charlie, think. You were gonna take something home. I a minute there, Charlie, you had me worried. I mean, you're always thinking such deep thoughts. How are you gonna remember a little thing like your landlady's birthday? Yeah, Miss Apple's gonna be real happy, and, and thanks for making me remember again. Well, what are pals for, Charlie? Give me the broom. Me and the boys will help you clean up. Right, fellas? Right. <laughs> Come on, Charlie. <laughs> hey, Kim. What gives? We filled this pail with raw dough this morning, full of yeast. <laughs> Charlie again. But he has a marvelous opportunity. Is it a uh, him or a uh, her? We call him Algernon. Algernon. Uh, please, set up number four. All right, you can take it away now. Now, you come, Charlie, and I'll show you something. OK, do you see your time? Why are you using the mouse test? 
We're simply using a laboratory animal, Mrs. Kinnian, to spur the subject on to his best effort. Now you and Algernon are going to run a race. Oh, well, I, I can beat him because I'm bigger than he is. It's not that kind of a race. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Charlie, what does this look like? That's a puzzle. Very good. That's right. Now watch. We put Algernon in here to start. Then we put some food in here at the finish. And Algernon knows he must find his way through the puzzle if he wants to get the food. And if he don't? Then he doesn't get to eat it. You don't? Don't worry, Charlie. You won't go hungry. Now, uh, Charlie, this is a diagram. Diagram? It's exactly the same as Algernon's puzzle. You'll take this pencil and draw from the start to the finish without going through any of the lines. You'll start at the same time Algernon does, and we'll see who gets through first. Do you understand, Charlie? Ready? Start. Is so smart. Hey, come on, Charlie, cheer up. Well, how'd you feel if you was dumber than a mouse? Good night, Miss Kenyon. Charlie, aren't you going to ask me up? I've never once seen your apartment. I'd like to see it. Well, it's just a room. It doesn't matter. It's upstairs. Can you imagine, Monty? Charlie Gordon with a girl. Well, he'd better have her out by ten. There'll be no hokey pokey in my house. It's just our room, Miss Kenyon. Oh, it's very nice. Oh, that's Gimpy and the guys at the bakery. They're my best friends. Charlie, may I have a glass of water, please? Yeah. Would you would you like a would you like a soda pop? Yeah, that'd be fine.
How about you? Oh, that's okay. Would you like to sit down? Hmm. Yeah, I would. Right, uh, chair. Thank you. I sit in this chair. It's little, but it's good. I had a radio, but it got busted. Charlie. Yeah. Can you keep a secret? Yeah. I'm a good secret keeper. That mouse you raised today. Yeah, that, that Algeron. He was very special. He had an operation. When it was over, he was smarter. The doctors are ready to try that operation on a man. They're ready to choose someone now. That's, that's why you had all those tests. Well, they should have told me I would have tried harder. Do you like an operation like that? Yeah. Why? Well, I, I, I like to be smarter so that I could understand Gimpy and the fellas at the bakery, because they, because a lot of the words I don't understand. And I, just so I could get a, a little closer, you know. I think we can get you to raise Algernon again. I don't know. And Algernon's a smart little mouse. Ready now? Start. Here are the results. His uh, performance IQ is 59, verbal 69, and full scale 70. Too low, at least for our first subject. Uh, we have other retardates who uh, uh, might be more suitable. Well, I have never met one who has Charlie's motivation. He came all by, all by himself for two years to night school to try to improve his reading. It's all very well, Mrs. Kinnian, but I think you Doctor, have to... isn't it true that the average retarded is overly sensitive and sometimes hostile? Mm. Well, in Charlie's working environment, he is the butt of all kinds of jokes, some of them cruel, yet he always remains cheerful and pleasant. The fact remains, he's a grown man. Doctor, is the operation dangerous? It need not involve any unusual surgical risk. It's the post-operative period we are concerned about. The younger our subject, the less complicated his emotional adjustment is apt to be. There is one point in Charlie's favor. Mrs. Kenya, and whoever we decide on will have to be put in an accelerated learning program. He'll need a full-time teacher. And somebody with Mrs. Kenyon's background, even more important, Someone he trusts. Would you be available? Well, my fiance and I were planning to, to work on a joint thesis for our doctorates. Mm. Well, at the moment, it's all hypothetical anyway. Of course. Thank you, Mrs. Kenyon. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Doctor. Come on. 
Charlie. Let's go. Yeah, it's just for us one more, Miss Kenya. Yeah. Not quite. You're a smart mouse, Algernon. Night, Bert. Night, Bert. Take it easy, Charlie. Night, Algernon. The younger generation are selling their souls to the devil. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the historical tour of Boston. This is the Charles River Basin, where amateur yachtsmen can sail 365 days a year. In the late afternoon, you can see the sculling crews of Harvard, MIT, and other universities practicing for their annual races. On the left is the Prudential Center. The Prudential Tower, 52 stories high, is the tallest building in the continental United States, if you consider Manhattan Island outside the continental United States. Here is Bunker Hill Monument. Stands 220 feet tall, 30 square feet at the bottom, 15 at the top, 294 winding stairs. It'll take you approximately 20 minutes to walk up, 15 minutes to come down, and 10 days to get over it. The Boston-Cambridge area has a total of 189 universities and small colleges. We're now going through Boston University, which includes a school of law, a school of political science, a school of philosophy, a school of accounting, School of Nursing, School of Business Administration, a School of Fine Arts, and many others. As you make a right-hand turn, look to your left. You'll see the Boston Public Library, the third oldest library in America. There is over two million volumes in this library. On your far left is the Old South Church. As you make a right-hand turn on Boylston Street, look to your right. You will see Trinity Church, founded in 1877, designed by Henry Hobbs and Richardson. Philip Brooks was pastor of this church for 22 consecutive years. While being pastor, was made bishop of Massachusetts. Most of you people remember Philip Brooks by his famous church hymns. One of the most famous Christmas carols, Old Little Town of Bethlehem. We will make a brief stop in South Boston to discharge a passenger. See you next Sunday, Charlie. Okay. Come on, Charlie. Just one beer. No, I can't. Not tonight, Kim. <laughs> I bet she's going to see that school teacher, huh? Boy, could I give her a lesson. I didn't think you went for broads, Charlie. Where well, I do, Kim. Hey, what do you do with her, huh? Uh, I promise I can't talk about it. What do you mean you can't talk about it, Charlie? Ain't I your best buddy? Sure you are, Kim. Well, what's the big mystery? Well, I promise I can't talk about it. Charlie, I'm disappointed in you. Oh, don't be mad at me, Kim. So come on over and have a beer, huh? Just a little beer. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Charlie, how about playing a little music, huh? Yeah, okay. Hey, I got it here. Yeah. Hold it, Hank, hold it. Charlie's got lots of dough, right, Charlie? Yeah, I save my dough, guys. <laughs> I'll bet you got a bundle tucked under the mattress, huh? <laughs> what do you save it for, Charlie? Oh, I don't know, something. What? <laughs> something. I so know. blow two bits, huh, Charlie? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hey, 
Hey, Charlie, what did you do to it? Drop a slug in? No, I put a quarter in there, Gimp, a real quarter. Well, talk to the juke, Charlie, like you always do, huh? Yeah. Yeah, okay, Juke, I put a quarter in there. You better play, you hear? Hey, Charlie, Juke don't like to be scolded. Uh -uh. Juke likes a nice, sweet tone of voice. Go ahead. Okay, Juke, uh, you're a nice Juke, and you got nice lights, and you're real nice. Hey, Charlie, you hear it's liable to snow tonight? No, I don't I didn't hear that, Jim. Yeah. Well, that's what they say. Look, I tell you what. How about stopping off at the corner of Manning and Standish on your way home? <sighs> okay, what do I do there? Well, I'll tell you, Charlie. A lot of people don't know this, but I'm gonna let you in on it. That's where the snow always starts. Yeah, right there on the corner where Manning runs into Standish. Now, you wait there for a while. That first flake comes down, you give us a call. That way, we get to get home in time before it really starts coming down. Okay, Charlie? Yeah. What? Who do I call? Hey, Patty, give Charles one of your cards. Better get started, Charlie. Yeah. Uh 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 uh. None of that now. <laughs> I guess I can afford to buy a beer for good old Charlie Gordon, right? All oh, right, of course. Come on, <laughs> Go Charlie. get him, Tiger. Go yeah. get him. So long, <laughs> so long pal. See you later. <laughs> well, here's to a blizzard. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, buddy, what you doing? What you doing? Waiting for it to snow. Let's go. <laughs> Stupid. Charlie. The operation. The operation? Yes. I made it? <laughs> yes.
Miss Canyon? Yes. I don't feel no smarter. Ready? Start. Lessons go tonight. Just one more time. I keep doing it again and... But try it, Charlie. Oh, surgical recovery is complete. Bert. Phase five mice. Look at their mental curve. He's shown no comparable intellectual progress. No. Oh. Charlie, I know that you can do it. Well, I know I can't do it, Doctor. I, yesterday and a day before, you keep saying I can do it, and, and Miss Kenyon says I can do it, and everybody says I can do it, but I know I can't but do it. But we know you can do it. I know I can't do it. Charlie, try. It makes a lovely, nice figure. I can't do it. Strauss, you know I can't do it. I know I can't do it, and I don't want to do it. I can't learn nothing. John, what's the matter? Does that operation make me dumber or something? No, nothing of the Well, I can't do any of the puzzles, and I'll tell you something else. I ain't racing that Algernon no more. I'm sick of being beat by a mouse and people laughing at Nobody me. Nobody is laughing. I at don't you. care. I'm going out of here now. sister named Jane and a dog named Spot. My name is Charlie Gordon and I live in a room and I got no sister and no dog and I am stupid! And what are you doing here? Well, I ain't gonna race you. I know why they brought you over here, but I ain't gonna race you. Cause I don't like you, you're not my friend. Charlie Gordon, do you have a girl in your room? No, it's a him. Charlie Gordon. It's a mouse. Young man, there are no mice in this house. Well, there's one in my room. They brought him over in a cage, but I ain't gonna race him. Hey, oh, hey, Charlie, I've been meaning to talk to you. Could you step in here, please? Monty, 
That nice Charlie Gordon is coming to visit. Charlie, you say a cage, a pet mouse? Yeah, but I ain't gonna race him. Charlie, come in here for a minute. Sit down, Charlie. Don't sit on Monty. Sit down, Charlie. Charlie. Yeah. Charlie, having a pet is a gift from God. Isn't that right, Monty? I don't know, Miss Apple. Don't argue with me, young man. I'm telling you. This little mouse is a blessing in disguise. First of all, a pet keeps you company. They don't talk back. They're loyal and loving. They are truly man's best friend. A little animal is one of God's creatures. They live only to comfort you. Now, Charlie, you go right back up there and you make up with him. Tell him you'll feed him, clean his cage, and give him water. That's all he wants. That and your love. And in return, he'll give you many happy hours. Monty, why don't we give Charlie one of your bones to give to the little mouse? Would you mind? I don't know if mice are carnivorous or vegetarians, but, well, anyway, Charlie, here you are. What are you going to call him? Uh, they call him Algernon. Algernon. Well, you and Algernon are welcome down here at any time. Thank you, Miss Apple. Algernon. What do you think of that, Montgomery?
家，还比家，爱比家，爱比家，爱比。I beat him! I 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 beat him! And they put and somebody and and a mouth. I got the rapper and I spelled school and and, and I and I went against him and I put him and I beat him. I creamed him. Miss Kenya, what happens now? Punctuated. Go ahead, punctuate it. That does not make sense. That that is is. That that is not is not. Is that it? It is. Student surpasses the teacher. Say, Mr. Kenyon. Yes. Where's Mr. Kenyon? He died, Charlie. Are you in love with Frank? Tomorrow's studies. Basic chemistry. Night, Charlie. Hi, Miss Kenyon. This is the capital of the United States. Our government is divided into three branches: the executive, the legislative, and the judicial. What are the two legislative branches of Congress called? Turn off the teaching machine to answer. House of Representatives and uh, Senate. Yeah, Senate. You are looking at a film of one of our country's most significant events. Who are these men? Why are they here? What did they do almost 200 years ago that affects your life today? Those men are getting ready to sign the Declaration of Independence and declare our country free from England. And I'm getting ready for work.
Charlie. Yeah? You know what day it is? No, I don't know, Gip. Oh, we aren't keeping you awake, are we? It's that chick, huh, Charlie? Just won't let you alone, huh? It's April Fool's Day, Charlie. That's what day it is. His birthday, huh? <laughs> <laughs> hey, the English Constitution? <laughs> hey, Gip. Yeah? You know what a uh, Magna Carta is? Yeah, that's a cigar, ain't it? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Hank, I need that. You really know all this stuff in here, Charlie? Or are you just looking at pictures? Well, I know some of it. Hell, Charlie, you're so smart that... Yeah, why not? Here. See this machine, Charlie? Yeah. You know what it is? Yeah, it's a machine that you work. How would you like to work it? Hey, can't you kidding? What do you mean, kidding, Joey? Man knows what the Magna Carta is. He ought to be able to operate a simple machine like a pastry mixer. Yeah, well, it took you two weeks learning how. That's a very complicated machine. Oh, not for Charlie. Here, come in here closer, Charlie. Now, look, Charlie, this is all you got to do. Step number one, you turn on your water. See? Make sure the temperature's 78 degrees, OK? Then we come over here and we set our water pressure at 140 pounds. You see that, Charlie, right there? And send it back and turn on the water switch. You got this now, right? Now we follow our fresh water, Charlie, along that line to that valve, see? Oh, excuse me, Joey. I want to get up there. And we come up here, Charlie, and we open up our flower hopper. Let's our flower down in. You mix it with the water, OK? Come over here. Open up our bowl, Charlie. I want you to get a look at this dough. Then we start up our agitator, Charlie. This steers up the dough inside. OK, see it? All right. Then we close it up. Now comes a very important thing, Charlie, these timing switches. You set your timing switches. And they're very important. Don't forget these. OK? All right. Now, Charlie, you put all this together, and it comes out dough. What do you say? I don't know. <laughs> Suppose he breaks it. Then we get the day off. Oh, April Fool's Day. <laughs> hey, what's <laughs> that? <laughs> hey, watch Charlie. can identify the activity in each of these slides. Is he in love with you? Charlie, 
I'd rather not discuss my personal life, if you don't mind. Not that there's anything secret about it or even unusual. It has nothing to do with your program of learning. First slide. I got a birthday present. It's not my birthday. And it's not for you. How's your not? It's his birthday cheese. It's his cheese cake. What makes you think it's his birthday? Well, how do you know it's not? Well, it's true. Happy birthday, Algernon. Happy birthday, Algernon. It's very nice of you, Charlie. Well, he's very special. your reason. I'm holding him back. He knows the answers and the questions before I even open the book. And? <laughs> and what? You seem tense. Is it that important for you to resign from this project? I gave you my reasons. Which I must reject. You're a psychologist. You know that Charlie has made a transference and at this point is completely dependent upon you. Yes. He's involved with you emotionally. That's normal, isn't it? Yes. And uh, you are involved with him emotionally? Why do you ask that? I am engaged, you know. Oh, I met your fiancé. Very charming. Uh, how long have you been engaged? I'll stay until the convention, Doctor. No longer. That's my news. Thank you. I've got to go. I can't find it. Bye-bye. Faneuil Hall, built in the early 1740s and given to the city by the merchant Peter Faneuil. It burned in 1761, but was rebuilt. It's still in use as, as a market, a, a meeting place museum. Charlie, why is it known as the Cradle of Liberty? Charlie? Charlie? If we'd walked in there, say, in 1774, who might we have met attending a meeting of protest? What's the matter? Nothing. Nothing. The next stop along the Freedom Trail is the North Church, built 1723, Boston's oldest church. For what historic incident is North Church known? I'm sorry, I didn't. What happened here that became part of our national heritage? Two lanterns in the steeple signaled Paul Revere. The British were on their way to conquer. Right. Any questions? Yeah, I was wondering why people that would never dream of laughing at a blind or a crippled man will laugh at a moron.
What happened? My friends at the bakery got up a petition and I got fired. Oh. Is that a automatic law, something like gravity? Increased intelligence equals lost friends. You needn't worry about losing your job. The doctors want you to work full time at the clinic, studying and learning and, <laughs> and getting paid too. <laughs> Will you be there all the time? Yes, I, I'm, I imagine so. At least until the convention. The, the doctors have been asked to head a symposium, the annual meeting of the Society for Cerebral Research. I suspect you and Algernon are scheduled to be their prime exhibits. What will we have to do? Oh, maybe speak a foreign language, do, a, do an exercise in Neo-Boolean math. Or... Both of us? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> George Bernard Shaw wrote something once. That's the catcher, please. I didn't know he wrote that. What? Pass the ketchup, please. Is it chowder, sir? No, it's the ladies. No, seriously. Thank you. He said, whenever you learn something, it seems at first Pardon, sir. as if you've lost something. A whole universe is opening up for you, Charlie. It's a world that's always been there, but not for you. Not till now. Cream, please. Now you're growing, and growth causes pain. You do your job very well. Very well. Bird, please. Are you quite certain of your evaluation of Charles Rocha? There's no question, in my opinion. Thank you. Once the initial breakthrough occurred, subject completed all elementary school work within five weeks. A capacity speed up occurred during the high school phase, and all this work was accomplished in three weeks. Instructions were then accelerated. You have been pushing him much too hard. The subject made the leap from rote memorization to a grasp of abstract theory, with the next step that of attaining insightful function and the ability to restructure. Subsequently... Richard. May I please have your attention? Emotionally, he's still a child. Frightened. Insecure. Look at these drawings I've had him do. They are representative of the last two months. Each one progressively more disturbed. Disturbed? He likes to paint. He still can't believe that he's being paid to do nothing but learn and paint and improve. But can't you see? I cautioned you about this before. Well, these aren't disturbed. <laughs> They're more sophisticated, more abstract than the ones he did a couple of months ago. You go right on, ignoring even the evidence. Come. Anna, I don't think we should interrupt his studies. Thymine, quinine, and citizen. Structure of the insulin molecule. Double chain, 51 amino acids employing 17 basic aminos cross-linked by sulfur atoms. What metal and what gas would you combine in order to convert heat into, into electricity. electricity? Tantalum and cesium vapor. Yes. What is the technique called the algebra of... What are you trying to turn me into? Some kind of a, of a side show? Oh, Anna, don't be ridiculous. You're pushing your program for its intellectual development much too rapidly. It has to keep pace with my program for its emotional development, or the imbalance will become dangerous. I thought we were to be satisfied with a minor miracle. What are you afraid to of? To help a retarded human being I'm a more productive member of society. He has shown no indication of any mental ceiling. So why are you afraid to reach for whatever that ceiling may be? 
In any event, we shall have to give Mrs. Kinney in her notice. What? Mm. All she can do now is ask him questions out of books that he's already absorbed. What he needs at this point is a giant step forward. New conceptualization. Inductive thinking. And that calls for experts, not Alice Kinney. I will say it once more, Richard. Charlie Gordon is still a child emotionally. I don't agree. Charlie, what is it? I brought you a present. Oh. Okay, come in. Very nice of you, Charlie. What's the occasion? Oh, I just want you to have a present. Sit down. Terribly expensive. You like it? It's beautiful, but it's too much. Just beautiful. Thank you. He only kissed you on the cheek. He? Frank? Charlie, have you been spying on me? I've been falling in love with you. No. These... These feelings aren't what you think. It isn't love, it's... We have fun working together, and, but you have to understand that between... Thank you. 
So you cycle outside. It's for sale. What did you learn? I'm back. What did you learn? I'm here. Me, Alice. Charlie, I could never keep up with you. And I don't want to hold you back, and I, I don't want to be left behind. Einstein had a wife. <laughs> Didn't Einstein say that, that everything was in motion, that nothing ever stands still? Marry me, pretty girl, marry me. We'll marry at quarter past Wednesday on the 74th of November. And our anniversary will happily be on those days when we both remember. Someday. Portugal straight ahead. Yeah. I can smell the olives. Ship ahoy. Abandoned schooner off the starboard bow. Want to ship out? Okay. Where are the sails? Hmm. Who needs sail? Captain of the ship, I now declare us man and wife. Mm -mm. I signed on only as first mate. You know what's going to happen in the year 2018? <laughs> I know we're going to let this year end. It'll be our golden wedding anniversary. Oh, Charlie, let's worry about breakfast. I think Algernon has found a wife. Mm-hmm. Or his true love. The plural of mouse is mice, and the plural of spouse must be spice. Oh. <laughs> Say, Charlie, the true love is letting go. What's enough love? Always a little more than anyone ever gets. Please, could we stop these recriminations and use the time to decide tomorrow's program? All right, you still really believe that he'll be here? But of course, you were on the extension, you heard them, they promised. How do we know what's happened to Charlie in the past four weeks? Whether he's learned more or just stood still, we have no immediate evaluation. I certainly don't want May to... May we concentrate on the presentation? All right, what are your ideas on the programming? How much time should we program for Algernon and the Face Five Nights? 
I thought we agreed to eliminate that part of the presentation. No, I did not agree to that. It is essential to show the entire graph of Algernon's various stages. In my opinion, uh, we should concentrate on Charlie, the preoperative testing, and then you cap it all off by bringing him out on stage. Why don't you just leave the programming to me, Anna? <laughs> you know, <laughs> sometimes you give me the feeling you have already written your acceptance speech for the ceremonies in Stockholm. Bravo, bravo, bravo! You made us lose a lot of valuable time. Time, as you've often taught me, Professor, is relative as it creeps on in its petty pace from day to day. To the last syllable of recorded time. <laughs> Edgar Allan Shakespeare. Oh, you both look happy. I have never felt happy. <laughs> there were no telephones where you were, Mrs. Kinney, and no post offices until yesterday. I didn't have a dime. I didn't have a stamp. I didn't have the time. She didn't have a dime, time, or the inclination. Hiya, Charlie. Hey, Bert. Mrs. Kinney. How are you? How's Algernon? Oh, last week he said hello to me in Sanskrit. What'd you say to him? <laughs> well, what do you say to a mouse who says hello to you in Sanskrit? I said hello. <laughs> <laughs> Homecoming. We still got a little champagne left. Champagne with a plastic top. Symbol of our times. Now that you're here, I want to run over tomorrow's program. Very well. What would you like, Professor? A treatise on photosynthesis and its effect on fourth-generation computers? By the way, how do your surgical techniques work on retarded computers? And you, Dr. Strauss, what would you like for an emotional effect? Would you like uh, uh, ideational activity or would you like uh, fragmented self-image? I would like a drink. Fragmented grape. Thank you. <laughs> Come on, Professor, cheer up. After tomorrow, you're going to be on the cover of Time and Newsweek. And you, Dr. Strauss, are going to be in the centerfold of Playboy. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor at this time to present to you the distinguished Dr. Richard Niemer and his colleague, Dr. Anna Strauss, who are responsible for the Algernon Gordon effect. You are all acquainted with their eminent qualifications through their published papers. Bert, I told you we're not going to use the phase five group. I asked for it to bring them. Some of the behavioral psychologists in the audience might care to see them. Do you think that's advisable? I think it is absolutely essential that... Dr. Anna Strauss and Dr. Richard Niemer. No. There's only a few hundred of the world's most eminent scientists out there. No reason to be nervous. Never mind about them. You are talking directly to me. Yes. Do not know what causes the type of stand where I can see you. Right there. Charlie Gordon. Let me know. Whatever it was resulted in a maverick enzyme of the kind which induces defective biochemical reaction and causes brain damage. Fortunately, while the destruction to the tissue is irreversible, the protein process is not. Many researchers are able to reverse the process through control of chemicals, which combine with the defective enzymes and change the molecular shape of the interfering key, as it were. This is also central in our technique. But first, we remove the damaged portions of the brain and permit the implanted tissues which have been chemically revitalized to produce brain protein at an accelerated and supernormal rate. Dr. Strauss. And now we would like to show you a film study of Charlie Gordon when he first came to the clinic. Very good. 
Shoes, gloves. Shoes and gloves, yeah. Shoes and gloves. You wear them. Yeah, that's right. Morning, afternoon. Morning. Charlie, you don't have to worry about passing or failing, not these tests. Uh, morning, afternoon. It's a very funny face, Charlie. That was Charlie Gordon then. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like you to meet Charlie Gordon now. Did you enjoy the film? Mr. Gordon, how do you feel at the present moment about your development? Grateful, sir. You are happy about it? Yes, sir. Why? Because it has allowed me to see. To see what? The world. And what do you see in that world? Well, my eyes are new, Doctor. I... And what do they see, Mr. Good? Things as they are. And? And what they are becoming. Can you give me an example, Mr. Gordon? No, sir, you give me one. Very well. Very well. Modern science. Rampant technology. Conscience by computer. Modern art. Dispassionate draftsman. Foreign policy. Brave new weapons. <laughs> Today's youth. Joyless, guideless. Today's religion. Breachment by popularity poll. Standard of living. A TV in every room. <laughs> Education. A TV in every room. <laughs> <laughs> the world's future, Mr. Gordon. Brave new hates, brave new bombs, brave new wars. The coming generation. Test tube conception, laboratory birth, TV education, brave new dreams, brave new hates, brave new wars, a beautifully purposeless process of society suicide. Any more questions? In the back, any more questions about things as they are and what they're becoming? No? I have a question. Professor Nemour. Charlie Gordon. Come on, Professor, you know. Charlie Gordon. You know, but you haven't told me. Anybody out there answer the question, Charlie Gordon? 
Anyone in the back answer the question, Charlie Gordon? No. Well, I'm disappointed in you, doctors. You're not very smart. You're not even as smart as a mouse. Because he knows. Algernon showed me. The answer to the question, Charlie Gordon, is... Charlie Gordon is a fella who will very shortly be what he used to be. Professor Nemour, why didn't you tell me the success of the operation was only temporary?
Thank Let you. me buy you a drink. No, I'm not. Right. Come on. I wish you would. Waitress? Entire phase five group. All the same as Algernon. Not one of the mice is any longer capable of solving the simplest problem. Did you find it? Why didn't you tell me? Why did you have to hide it? But we only discovered an indication of this condition last week, Mrs. Kenyon. And only in a few of the phase five mice, I assumed it was simply erratic behavior, individual behavior. There was no need to alarm Charlie. Of course not. With the convention coming up, why should you both miss your moments of glory? Now, Mrs. Before Kenyon, we had a chance to run further checks, he had no right to make it public. No right! Have you any idea what he has done to our standing in the scientific You're community? Standing. Let us calmly this. Passionately try to decide what we are going to do about this situation. Which situation? You're standing in the scientific community or Charlie? They're related, you know. Is that all this means to you? But don't you understand, Mrs. Kenyon? I don't know the regression that the groupies will happen to Charlie. Charlie's a human being, not a laboratory animal. This regressive syndrome may be limited to the mice. Now, I would thank you, Mrs. Kinnian, if you... Something, but not close enough. Let me go. Is there a second operation you can give him? Is there some corrective surgery? No. I see. Well, tell me, what do you do around here with the specimens that fail? The freezer first, then the incinerator? <laughs> How can I help? Consider the human brain as an information processing system of several parts. Particle service consisting of distributed logic arrays, various multidirectional buses, and distributed converters for converting synaptic memory to DNA storage. One area for investigation is the doctor's hypotheses that the mind can be permanently improved through surgery and enzyme enrichment, thereby utilizing unused portions of the brain. Can you program that? That's a little vague, Mr. Gordon. Could you give me more detailed specs? Well, it correlates to what we've already programmed with DNA conversion. I see. Can we use the same system? Right, just change the variables. Is mental improvement temporary because it lacks appropriate DNA conversion, because of storage limitation, which tends to overload and gradually disables the repaired area? Any combination of those factors. Run it. Assuming the brain neurons store information on a temporary basis only. Let us assume. Thank you, this one's finished. Assuming the brain neurons store information on a temporary basis only, let us assume that this information is subsequently coded into DNA molecules, permitting storage of far more material than the nerves could hold all by themselves. It could be that this transformation takes place during sleep and is indeed one of the purposes and needs for sleeping and for, and for dreaming. Simulating brain damage, comparing homologous lesions in the tissue of animals and corresponding Chorus. And chorus. And and chorus. Mary Carr's no 
your great sense of the imagination to visualize a possible connection between proteins that this is in. And what? Perhaps the only possible answer our question is, whatever we said the mind is, we will discover it is not. It may be that we've been trying to capture something which is scientifically... ...which by its very nature is scientifically premature. Charlie, go. Go home, Charlie. You'll work better in the morning. I'm finished. Work is finished. That's good. Then you can go home and sleep for at least two days. Tapes will have to be programmed. Could they do it tonight? If you go home and sleep. I'd rather wait. Might take all night. I'll wait. Evaluations were correct. That's too bad. Mm -hmm. Such a promising theory. It is. It still is. Thank you. My coffee. Everything's closed. I'm Charlie Gordon's. Open 24 hours a day, you know that. You hungry? Want some eggs? No, just coffee. I hope it's not too strong. Marry me, Charlie. Now, tonight. Get your spoon.
marry me. All right, don't marry me. Motion carried. But I'm going to stay right here. Whenever you feel like telling me to go, just let me know. Just tell me so. I'll go. I'll leave. Leave. Please leave. 